Hello guys, uh, welcome back to MedZone African Motives, uh, still working on Meccano techniques and five revisions. We focused before on the epicyclic gear train, uh, but in this case we shall see a different approach, uh, or in fact not a different approach, but uh, uh, the calculation of torque in this case, which is uh, another part that we never discussed about uh, which is the calculation of the output torque in this case. So that is the major important part. And also to see some of the mistakes that we had on this question paper. This is April 2020. So if we check, you might be wondering some of the calculations which were there and uh, you doing your good calculations, then you will see they are not corresponding. So I shall talk about that, the error that was uh, presented on our question paper. But if you are to check, you are given uh, in the epicyclic gear train shown below, we are given gear B, uh, it's got 100 teeth externally and 140 teeth externally and 100 teeth internally. So this is having an external shell and the internal part. So I explained this about being external and being internal. Uh, if we check the question paper, I think uh, that should be April 2023, uh, I, I guess, I don't know. Uh, but I talked about that particular part of uh, uh, the section of being external and internal. So the internal part is the one that is affecting the, our planetary gear inside, while least the external part is the one that is affecting the gear A. This one is affected by B, which is our annulus in this case, or the ring gear. Uh, externally. So that is uh, the concept of being told about external or uh, internal because these two, they affect differently for the uh, planetary and for the gear A, which is outside. All right. So that is it. Uh, the driver A has got 30 teeth and the arm is connected to the driven shaft. Gear D has got 60 teeth and uh, A, uh, if gear A is revolves uh, at 100 revs, uh, 130 revs per minute, and gear D revolves at 35 revs per minute. So this is the information that we are given. I think I'm gonna just take it down so that when we are doing our calculations, we do not struggle. All right, so the first part we are given the B, uh, the number of teeth on B, which is our annulus in this case. So we are given uh, TB, which is being 140 teeth in this externally. And we also have TB, being 100 teeth uh, internally in this case. All right, then uh, what else? A in this case is having 30 teeth in this case. So the number of teeth on A is given as uh, 30. Uh, then what else do we have? We've got uh, the arm which is connected to gear D, which is the sun uh, gear in this case. So we are given the sun gear which is a uh, TD being uh, 60 teeth in this case. If gear A, is revolving at 100, so we're given the speed of A in this case, all right, the speed of gear A, that is uh, 130 revs per minute, and gear D, the speed of D, uh, which is the sun gear in this case, is uh, 35 revs uh, per minute. This is the information that we're given. And the first question, I explained this uh, up to 1.3, so I'm just going to rush because I had that explanation before. The first question is given, calculate 1.1, the number of teeth on gear C in this case. So if we are to check gear C, uh, that is the planetary gear in this case. We are talking about uh, C being our planet gear, which is the planetary gear uh, together with this part is the same. So we want to calculate the number of teeth on this gear. If we are to consider We've got uh, the number of teeth for the sun gear. We also have the number of teeth uh, for the annulus in this case, but we have to consider internally. Uh, the internal part is the one that is affecting uh, inside our epicyclic, this one. So we are going to consider the one that is inside, which means we are going to consider the internal number of teeth of uh, B, which is our annulus. So how are we going to find the number of teeth on C? which is the planet gear. So if we are to consider uh, the formula, I talked about this formula, you're also given this on your formula sheet that TA is equal to TS uh, plus two TP. Uh, if we are given a consideration whereby, whereby maybe you are working with uh, the center distance, uh, whereby you've got the modulus, in this case, you can consider that part. But in this case, uh, if you are given the pitch center, 
uh, distance, you can also calculate your uh, your TA from there if you divide by the module, in this case, the number of teeth, but we do not have this. So we are going to consider this part because we are given the number of teeth on the annulus we have. We have got the number of teeth in this case for the sun gear. We want the number of teeth of the planetary gear, which is TC. Uh, remember C is the planet gear. So we are to calculate TC. So let us write in terms of what we are given TA, which is the annulus. In this case, our annulus is B. So it is going to be TB is equal to TS, which is the sun gear. That is a TD plus 2TP, which is the planet gear, which is TC. So that is going to be TC. So as we have to calculate TC, you can just make this the subject. That is a TB transpose TD to this side. We're going to subtract, uh, which is equal to 2TC. Divide by 2, that means TC is going to be equal to what? If we divide by 2 by 2, we are going to obtain TB minus td over two so this is the formula that you're going to use to calculate the number of teeth uh on c but on the b now be careful on the b because that one it's uh, it's it's wrong from your memo if you check the applied 140 external this external part is not affecting the planet gear the one that is affecting the planet is the inner part of the gear the inner part so you use tb the one that is from the inner part which is the interior so, or the internal uh, number of teeth, which is 100. So this was supposed to be 100 minus TD. On D, we have got 60 teeth in this case. So this is going to be 60 over two. So that was going to give us TC, 100 minus 60, that's 40. Divide by two, that's gonna be 20 teeth. So this is the number of teeth that we are going to obtain uh, on the gear C, which is the planetary gear in this case. All right, then let's check um, uh, 1.2, the speed of gear B. All right, the speed of gear B, if we are to consider what is happening on gear B uh, this time, uh, if we are to consider, we are going to see that it is being driven by A. A, the outer part, which is outside in this case, is the one that is driving gear B. So as A is driving, the gear B, it is affecting gear B externally on the outer part. So we are going to consider the outer part of B and also the direction of B is going to be in the anti-clockwise. As A is going clockwise, B is going to be affected in the anti-clockwise. So meaning to say we can calculate the number of uh, the number, uh, I mean the, the, the speed of gear B in this case from simply the ratio of number, uh, the speed, times the number of teeth on A is must be equal to the product to the speed of B times the teeth of B. Because we have this part, we have the, the speed of A, we have the number of teeth on B, but externally, we are supposed to work it externally, it's affecting A externally. So let us uh, make B uh, and B the subject, this one. So simply we are going to divide by TB. So we are simply going to divide by TB, both sides so that we remain with the speed that is affecting B. Uh, so the speed affecting B is going to be uh, the speed of A times the teeth of A over the teeth of B. But uh, like I consider that as A is going clockwise, B is going to be driven in the anti-clockwise direction. So NA, it's 130. Also here, if you consider the, if you, this part, they are saying, the driver A, the driver A is the driver, this gear, this gear is just driving. So as it is driving, it is driving in a clockwise direction. B will be driven in anti-clockwise. So its speed is going to be a negative. So that's the whole concept. All right, so NA, it's uh, 130 times TA, the number, uh, the number of teeth of A, that is 30. And on B, we are going to consider the number of teeth of B externally, the one that is affecting A, on the external part and that is 140 externally uh that is 140 so we're going to have 130 times 30 over 140 this is going to give us the speed that is affecting gear b which is going to give us uh something like 27 comma 857 in revs per, per minute so like i said if A is going clockwise, B is going to be referred in the anti-clockwise direction. So this is in the anti-clockwise. It's driven in the anti-clockwise direction. So it means 
this value is a negative, all right? So if you write anti-clockwise, there's no need for you to write negative. If you write negative, then don't write anti-clockwise. If you write anti-clockwise, then know that there is a negative. So on your calculation, NB is going to be considered as a negative, negative 27,857 revs per, per minute. That is an anti-clockwise direction uh, because of what A is doing. A is driving B in the clockwise while it is going uh, clockwise b is going to be considered as a reverse so that was it uh, we have the speed of b then uh, let us consider this part uh, the speed of the arm that is 11 marks for that in order for us to have the speed to just check where the arm is connected there we are supposed to consider our table of motions in this case so and as you are considering your table of motions what is going to work is the part of the planetary gear, which is the inner part of it, not the outer part, but the inner part of it. So meaning to say A is not included. We are going to consider the planet gear, uh, the sun gear, and the external part, and uh, the internal part, uh, this one of our annulus gear, and also the arm. So these are the ones that we consider one, two, three, uh, four, uh, these are the ones that we are going to consider. So remember your table, guys, how it is like. So I'm just going to draw the table uh, of motions in this case. All right, so let me have the table of motions. All right, so our table is going to be just like this. All right, so remember, we are going to consider our numbers in this case. Uh, then we're going to have the condition. All right, so we're going to have our condition. So then the gears... Uh, so it's wise enough for you to start from the outer part, uh, from the outer part, which is the annulus to the planetary, to the sun and to the arm. So we are going to consider, remember uh, the planetary, it's the, uh, the annulus, it's gear B. So we are going to have gear B for the uh, annulus gear. So we're going to have our gear B, uh, this being our annulus in this case. All right. So that's our annulus or the ring gear. Then we have got uh, the planetary gear. Uh, we have got uh, the planetary uh, gear. We also have the sun gear in this case, all right? So the planetary gear is gear C. Is that so? Yeah, that is gear C in this case, all right? So we've got uh, gear C here, all right? So that is gear C, then the sun, uh that is our gear d the sun is gear d according to what we are given here that is gear d then we have got uh, the arm which is uh, e so we've got the arm e all right so that is we're gonna consider the arm e so this is what we are going to have uh if you check on my table here i i considered uh, having four parts uh if you are to see the conditions that we are going to have, uh, we're supposed to end at this part. This is where our person was supposed to end at this stage. But uh, if we see here on the 1.4, they want us to calculate the torque output of arm E if D is now fixed. So it means we are going to consider that condition. But for question 1.3, for question 1.3, okay, let me list up to where question 1.3 is supposed to end. We answer question 1.3, then we go back to the table again because the, the part of that talk there is the one that made me to extend to put another extension. But someone might be wondering, why are we having an extension? All right. So remember the stages. The stages, they do not change. The first condition, always the first condition, we have to fix the arm. So this is our first condition. We are supposed to fix the arm. Not looking on your diagram, fix the arm uh or fix arm e in this case so e is our arm in this case then what is it that we do we rotate the annulus in this case and our annulus is gear b so we're going to rotate uh gear b which is your annulus always this is what you're going to do all right after uh, how are you going to rotate it you're going to rotate this uh one uh, revolution clockwise so that's a plus one revolution to show B is going to be is going to rotate only one revolution clockwise. So what is going to happen at B? So B is the one that rotated uh, one revolution clockwise. All right. And also let us consider something here. Remember about B. 
we have uh, about B, uh, the teeth that is affecting on B is the internal part, the one that is affecting our, our uh, epicyclic system. We are going to consider the internal part. So the teeth that we are going to take on B is the internal, which is 100. So we're going to consider the teeth of B here, which is 100. The internal part is the one that you're going to consider. And also, remember, we calculated the speed at B. Uh, the speed for B, we got negative 27. So the anti-clockwise, said, it's a negative. So the speed is negative 27, comma 857. Negative 27, uh, comma 857. So that we do not keep on repeating, keep on checking this information, all right? Then about C, we have got uh, TC in this case. Uh, C in this case, remember the planet gear, we calculated TC here, we got 20 teeth. So this one is going to be 20. So that is what we have in this case, 20. Uh, and we do not have uh, the speed. We are not given the speed of C, we do not have. So we have to move on to D. About D, we have got the number of teeth on uh, B on D. Okay, what is the number of teeth on D? On D, the number of teeth is uh, 60 and the speed is 35. So it's 60 versus 35, 60. Uh, and the speed of D is 35 revs per minute. And the arm that we are given, uh, we do not have anything about the arm. So we, this is the information that we have. With this information, that is the information that we are, sup we are supposed to end there about calculating the speed of the arm. The question is for you to calculate the speed of the arm, in, which is it. We, we, this is the information that we have. It only that, that is what we have. 1.4 is some, it's another question on its own. On what we are given, this is what we only have. This is the information that we have so far, this information. And with this information, I said A is not affecting, A is affecting externally our epicyclic. So we are not involving this A on our calculations of uh, anything, it's not involved there. All right, so meaning to say, with this information, let us consider what we said, we, are, we said, we are going to rotate. What are we going to rotate? We are going to rotate uh, the annulus one revolution. So what is going to happen with the, the planetary gear in this case? What is going to happen on the planetary gear, which is gear C? All right, so on gear C, which is uh, the planet is this case is going to be affected by B uh, in which way? So it's going to be, uh, that is what we have here on uh, gear C, which is the planet. So as, all right, this one, do not consider. This one was on a rotation that was happening in the first place about A. Now we are saying B, which is the annulus, it is going in the clockwise. Remember, it's plus one revolution. So the planet also goes the same direction as the annulus. So it is going to be uh, the driven, which is in this case TB over TC. So it is going to be a positive. So here we are going to obtain TB over TC. All right, uh, which is going to be T, TB, which is 100 internally. We consider TB internally this time. So that is uh, internally, it's 100. So it's going to be 100 over TC, which is 20. So this is going to give us a five. All right, about D, which is the sun. Remember the sun is going to be rotated in the anti-clockwise, but from the outer part, we are going to start from the outer part. The sun here is uh, affected by the planet. By the planet was affected by the what? By the annular. So the sun is going to be affected in the anti-clockwise. So meaning to say from the previous part, we obtained uh, that we have got TB over TC in order for us to have a movement. Now we are saying as the sun is going in the anti-clockwise, it is being driven in the anti-clockwise by what? By the planet, which is going in the positive. So it is going to be TC over negative uh, TD. So as you can see, this part and this part will cancel uh, TC and TC. So the formula is just gonna be TB over minus TD. But in actual sense, it was supposed to be TB over TC times TC over minus TD. Uh, TD. As I was explaining that always, if you check your formula is simply here, TA, over TA, here is going to be uh, TB, we are considering B. So here we are going to consider again B, TB, 
which is this one over TC, TB over TD, but with the naked because the, uh, uh, the sun gear rotates in the anti-clockwise as uh, the planetary and the annulus are going in the clockwise. So as we saw that these two are simply the same, so we are going to just remain with what? With uh, TB over minus TD, or you can just substitute as they are, you are simply going to obtain the same answer. So TB internally, it's uh, 100. You consider the internal part over minus TD, which is uh, 60 in this case, it's gonna be negative 60. So that means we are going to obtain a negative. That's negative one comma uh, six, six, seven. All right, then about the arm, remember the arm is the one that is fixed. So the arm is going to be a zero because it is uh, fixed. All right, so that was uh, from the information that we are given. With this information, guys, we are going to calculate the speed at E. From which concept? The second part also it's a fixed thing that you are simply going to take always on each and every calculation that you are going to do. You are going to multiply uh, by X. So you multiply by X and add Y. So you are going to add Y. You multiply this part by X, you add Y. So it's one times X, which is X. Then we add y five times x, which is five x. Then we add y minus one comma six six seven times x. It's minus one comma six six seven x. Then we add y zero times x. That was going to give us zero x. Then we add y. So zero x is zero plus y. We are going to obtain a y. So you multiply by x. This number you multiply it one times x whatever that you get you add y that is the whole concept that we are doing here all right so uh this is the condition now the third part here you consider the speeds that you are given and their directions we are not given a condition to say a is going to fix is going to be fixed or b is going to be we are not given a condition i mean that b is going to be fixed or c is going to be fixed no we are not given we are just asked to calculate the speed of arm E. So you are going to take these speeds as they are. They are, this part as they are. Are we having the speed uh, in this case for B? We are given the speed of B from our previous calculation that we made. We obtained the speed of B. We have the speed of B in this case, which is negative 27,857 revs per minute. Uh, then C, there's nothing about C, okay? D, we have for the speed of D in this case, which is 35 revs uh, per minute. This is what we have. We want to calculate the speed of E. We do not have the speed of E. That is our question. So we substitute what we have. The speed of B, we have it. We say negative 27,857. C, we do not have anything here. D, its speed, we say it is 35. Then E is the one that we are supposed to calculate its speed. So we do not know the speed. From this information, that is where we are supposed to calculate the question. That is, we are supposed to calculate our uh, question on 1.3, which is asking us to calculate the speed of the arm. We can count. Then 1.4, we are going to talk about the part of the talk. We are going to come back to this diagram and fill in ag again on this part. But for now, to answer 1.3, this is the information that we need. So what are we going to do from uh, this information? Remember, we are supposed to calculate the speed of E in this case, we do not know. So I said, you are going to consider, you equate these two, they are equal. So we are going to equate now uh, X plus Y to this, for, to this part. So X plus Y is equal to minus 27,857. Then here we do not have anything. Here we are going to equate 35. So that's minus one comma six six seven x uh, plus y is equal to thirty five. All right, this one is equal to thirty five. Then y is equal to the speed of e. So meaning to say the speed of e that we want is equal to y. So what does it mean? Instead, we are simply going to calculate y. If we calculate y, we have the speed of e. That is the whole condition. If you calculate y, you have the speed of e. And also the direction from the sign that you are going to that you are going to have at the end, the sign that you are going to have. All right. So uh, from these two equations that we have, uh, we can manipulate 
one of these equations to make x the subject so that x remains in terms of y, then we use that to calculate the value of y. So from equation one, so I'm going to work from equation one. So from equation one, I'm going to make x the subject. That means x is going to be equal to minus 27 comma 857. If I transpose y to this side, it is going to be a negative. That is going to be minus y. So with this value of x or with this equation, or express that I'm having, I'm going to substitute into equation two. So in equation two, we obtain that, or we are given that minus one comma six, six, seven times X, whereby X is given as minus 27 comma eight, uh, five, seven minus Y plus Y in this case. So plus Y we are supposed to get what? We are supposed to get a 35. So we had to substitute in equation two. So we substitute in, equation two, whatever that you are given, it's by substitution. So meaning to say we can calculate the speed, we can calculate the value of y. By calculating the value of y, we are obtaining the speed. In this case, expand your brackets. This part you're going to obtain uh, 46 comma 438, uh, negative one comma six times minus y is going to be a positive one comma six six seven uh, y in this case, all right? So which is, uh, plus a y that we have here, we've expanded this bracket, all right? Then we are going to add this y here. So plus y is equal to 35. So we can collect like terms, y and y here, this is same as a one. So if we add, this is going to be one plus one comma six, six, seven, which is two comma six, six, seven y is equal to, we can transpose 46 comma this to this side, which is going to be a negative. So it's 35 comma, 35 minus, 46,438 to the other side is going to be a negative. Then now uh, we can simplify uh, this on our calculator that is going to be negative 11,438. Uh, so to find Y, we can simply divide by 2,667, both sides, 2,667, both sides. That's, we have got the value of Y in this case, which is going to be minus 4,289. Uh, so as you can see, it's a negative, meaning to say it's an anticlockwise. So that's the speed of E in this case, which is equal to Y is going to be uh, minus 4, uh, 289, which is in a revs per what? Revs per minute. So that is the whole idea of the question. The question was to calculate the speed of E. So if you are to write in terms of a positive, you are going to write as 4, 289, uh, revs per minute, then it's what? Anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise. You don't write negative, then you write also anti-clockwise. The moment you remove that negative or the moment you consider this, you are going to write it now to say it's and it's going anti-clockwise way. So that was the whole idea of the question. To calculate the speed that is affecting E, the speed that is affecting E. So we now have this speed that is affecting E. Then we move on to question 1.4, this one. So 1.4 now they are saying we are supposed to calculate the torque output on arm E. The torque output, the output the torque on arm E. All right. In order for us to obtain the torque output, we are supposed to use the condition that we are given. If gear D is now fixed, take note. If gear D is now fixed and gear A transmit a torque of 20 Newton uh, per meter, which is gear A is the input. Remember what is happening with A in this case is the one that is on the outer part, the, the, the one that's gonna drive. So it's in the input in this case. So we are given its torque in this case on the input. All right, so that is what we are given now. So let me remove this part. Please be careful about this part that you are given. So what does it mean is that this input that we calculated before, remember, we calculated this, the speed of E. The speed of E that we calculated is, uh, is representing, uh, the, 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 it, it, what is it representing? It, it's from a condition of the arm. That was the, the, the part of the, we're given just the normal speeds. Now we have a condition. Let, let me put this way. All right, let me put it this way, guys. Uh, so this one, I'm going to remove all this part, all right? I'm going to remove this part here. You understand what I'm trying to say. 
uh, you understand me here. So do not confuse the, the question on 1.3, this one that we calculated, and this one on 1.4. They are different questions uh, together. But what is happening is that we are still on our table. This information, we used it, this one, we used this information to calculate the speed of E, this information that we see here. So we are now going back to the table with a condition now that we need so that we calculate the output speed because they are saying we are supposed to calculate the torque output of, on the arm E. We calculated the speed on arm E before. But we need, in this case, we need what is affecting E on the output. So we are going to calculate again the speed of E. In this case, we are going to need uh, the speed of E. So this is question 1.4. We are going to need the speed of what? Of E on the output. On the output what? On the output conditions from output conditions. That is what you are going to need from output conditions. What is it that we have on the output conditions? On the output conditions, they are saying, if here D is now fixed, here D is now fixed, there is no movement. In this case, if it is fixed, there is no movement, meaning to say the speed of D is now zero revs per minute. But before we were given the speed of D as 35, that was on, on another condition that we used in this case to calculate the, the speed of arm E. Now it's another condition. They are now saying the D is now fixed. So meaning to say our condition for here, here D is now fixed. So its speed is now at zero revs per minute. That is what we are given for D. And what is going to happen? A, it transmits a torque of at 100 revs per minute. So we are given A, remember A is on the input. So we are given the speed, uh, or the torque on A, which is uh, the input in this case. This is our input. Uh, this is the, the driver of the whole system. A is the driver of the whole system. So we have its input torque in this case uh, of A, uh, which is given as what? Uh, 20 Newton meter. So we've got 20 Newton. Let me just finish. Uh, 20 Newton meter. And we also have the speed of A. Remember, this is... Uh, in the input, in this case, A is on the input, and we have got its speed. The speed of A does not affect our diagram, no. It does not affect our diagram. So this is 100 revs per minute. Uh, 130 revs per minute. In this case, 130 revs per minute. So this speed of A does not affect our diagram. On the diagram, we need the part of the epicyclic, which is D. It's part of the epicyclic, D, D the one that we have. It's part of our epicyclic. This one is external part. But also we have got the speed of B that we calculated before. Remember that one we are going to take as it is negative 27 comma. We are given the conditions about D, not about B, not about the annulus. The annulus is still on its speed, all right? So meaning to say the annulus is going to be on its speed of negative uh, 27 comma 857 uh, revs per minute. What about... Uh, E, that is the one that we are supposed to calculate now. We need the speed of E on the output conditions now from the output conditions. So that was the whole part of the question. So that's where you see the table being combined. It's not like you are working each separately. So this is for question 1.4, this part here. All right, so we have the speed of B. We say this one is negative 27,8, uh, 57. Uh, there's nothing about C. Then D is now we are told that D now it's fixed. We are no longer using this speed that we had. That one is it was on another condition that we used. Now we are dealing with the D on the condition that we are given that it's fixed. And we are supposed to calculate the speed of E on the output. So just like the previous part, we are going to calculate first the speed. Uh, remember the torque. Why am I focusing on the speed? Remember, the torque is given by the formula. We are going to calculate torque from the formula T in times the speed in uh, together with the T out times N out in this case, plus the T at hold, the torque at hold, which also affects the speed at hold. In this case, at hold, there's no movement. So the speed is zero. This must be equal to zero. 
So the, the, why, we are, why we are talking about output? Because the output in this case condition, the output condition that we are talking about is uh, from T out. Remember, they want to calculate T out. So any out is the speed of E at a output condition, the speed of E. Why list T in and N E? These are the speeds of A, which is the driving gear, the one that we are given on the output, uh, on the input of the system of, this is the input of the whole system now. That is the condition. So that's why we have to calculate NE. So meaning to say we are forced now to calculate NE the same way that we calculated our, the, our speed of E uh, by formulating equations. But remember, last time we formulated our equation, to, equating to this part. Now we are going to formulate our equation equating to the item four. Now this item, we are going to equate to this part. We are going to equate to this part. We are going to equate this part. That is the condition of our question this time. We are now having another condition. That condition, we used it to calculate uh, question 1.3. So meaning to say on these conditions, it follows that from our equation, x plus y, we say it, it is equal to this part now. So it means x plus y is going to be equal to minus 27, comma, 8, 5, uh, 7. Here, there's nothing to equate on this part. There's nothing to equate. We move on to this part. Uh, minus 1,667x plus y must be equal to 0. And y is equal to the speed of e. So we need to say the speed of the arm is equal to y. So that's what we have this time. So we are going to calculate the speed of e, which is the one that we need on the output uh, as our output speed in this case. So how are we going to calculate uh, NE in this case? So to calculate uh, NE, as we are told that NE is equal to Y, we are simply going to calculate the value of Y just like the previous part that we did, guys. So we've got equation one and equation two. All right, so we can make X the subject from equation one. From equation one, make X the subject. We need to say X is equal to minus 27,857 minus Y on this side. So this is just a repetition of what we did in the previous question, as we can see, now we can substitute uh, this x in equation two. If we substitute in equation two, it means we are going to have negative one comma six six seven times x, which is our x is minus twenty seven comma eight five seven minus y. Then plus y in this case, we must obtain what this time we must obtain as zero. So that's it. Expand brackets and solve. Uh, that is going to be 46, uh, 468, this one and this one, negative, negative becomes a positive 1,667y plus y, which is equal to zero. So as you can see, we are going to collect our like terms. Uh, that's going to be 2,667y is equal to, we transpose this to the other side, it becomes a negative. So it's zero minus 46, which is going to be minus 46, 468. So to find y, simply divide by negative 2,667 both sides. So this is going to give us negative 17, uh, 423. All right. As the value of y is representing our speed of the arm, which is e, so it means n e is going to be equal to negative 17, uh, 423, which is in a revs per what? which is in revs per minute. So this is the speed of E at output condition. So we are talking about the output speed in this case. This is our output speed. With the output speed that we have calculated now, we are going to use it to calculate the output torque, which is the one our question is asking us here to calculate what? To calculate the output, the torque output on arm E. We use output conditions. So from the formula that I listed here, that T in times N in is equal uh, plus T out times N out plus T hold times N hold is going to give us a zero. So we are simply going to substitute what we have on our formula and we calculate uh, T out. Remember, we are supposed to calculate T out from what we have. All right, so what is it that we have in this case? Uh, we are going to take what we have from this person. So in this case, we have uh, T, uh, T in, which is uh, from the input. This one, you take it, we are given here on A about A. This is the information about gear A. 
And remember, gear A is uh, uh, this one. Gear A transmitted torque of 20 Newton at 130 revs per minute. And gear A is the input of the system if we check here. So that is, uh, we are going to use that on our input. So there we have got uh, everything. So let us just substitute here. So that was the whole uh, condition about our 1.4. So it means T in, uh, which is TA, that is 20. So we're gonna have 20 times N in, which is the input, which is still at A, we are given the speed there of 130. Last T out, that is the one that we are supposed to calculate the torque out times N out, which is N E, the speed of E, which is uh, a negative in this case, if we check from our person, we obtained negative uh, 17,4 to 3, all right? That is plus the torque at hold. We do not know this torque at hold, but what we know that is at hold, meaning stationary. So when stationary, there is no movement at stationary. So the speed, when the gear is stationary, it's zero. So that means here, we are going to use a zero. So that's it, which is going to be equal to zero there. So with this formula uh, and manipulating this formula, we can calculate the output torque in this case. How are we going to calculate uh, the output torque? You can simply, uh, we can simply combine everything. In this case, 20 times 130 uh, is going to give us 2,600 plus uh, that's negative 17,423 times T out. We're going to have negative 17,423 times uh, T out in this case. Uh, then zero times any number gives us a zero. So we are going to, we are not going to have anything here. So that's a plus and a minus. We get a minus here. And if we transpose uh, 2,600 to the other side, it becomes a negative. But here we said plus and minus, that's a negative. So we're going to have negative 17 comma four two three uh t out which is equal to two thousand six hundred to the other side it becomes a negative so that's negative two thousand six hundred so to find t out we're gonna divide uh by negative seventeen comma four two three uh both sides so this is going to give us a positive negative a negative is going to be a positive uh that's gonna be one hundred forty nine comma two two eight uh, which is the torque in this case measured in uh, Newton meters. All right, so that is the whole idea of a question which asks you to which way by you are given or you're asked to calculate the output torque. It's a continuation uh, of what we had, the table that we had before the information, but you have to work with the, the relevant information of the table. On your table here, you are supposed to now consider the information that you are given at output conditions. What is it that you are given at output conditions? Uh, that is where you are taking now from this co uh, consideration at output conditions, we are given gear D is now fixed. We have gear D being fixed, meaning to say there's no movement. So its speed is going to be zero reps per minute. While list gear A, which is our input A in this case, representing uh, the input of the gear system, is 20 Newton. The torque there is 20 Newton meter, and also the speed, which is the speed at the input. So we've got the T at the input, and we also have the speed at the input. So with the formula now that we are considering uh, that N e, uh, T in times N in on the torque in this case, uh, if you are considering the torque in times N in plus T out times N out plus T hold times N hold should give us a zero. And N hold is a speed at hold, at hold, at hold. The speed is a zero. There is no movement there. So that means we're going to have a zero. Sometimes they'll ask you to calculate the power and so forth. So we shall see uh, those typical questions as we move on. But uh, let us just try to revise as much questions as we can, as we are preparing for the exams, which are ahead of time. But for now, that's it guys, uh, till we meet again.